Help he is tending to believe the only thing keeping him alive is God. You think I've brought you this far just to let it end here? This isn't just a typical fighting game. This is Super Smash Brothers Brawl. And Winner is... Samus! It's this big blowout final episode. I think we kind of blew the budget on the effects. Hey everyone, welcome to Hyperspace Weekly. I'm Kim Poirier. Don't worry, this is not a repeat. I'm back. And this week we have an action-packed show filled with lots of fan favorites. We've got week two of our special countdown to the premiere of the fourth season of Battlestar Galactica, exclusive interviews with members of the Stargate SG-1 cast talking about their new DVD film, The Ark of Truth, and Super Mario in his latest game, Super Smash Bros. Brawl for the Wii. On top of that, we'll take a look at the new adventure film 10,000 BC, plus some really cool giveaways you won't want to miss. We know you've been waiting for it, and we've got it. Premiering here on Space, Friday, April 4th at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, is the fourth season of Battlestar Galactica. Each week leading up to it, as promised, we'll be featuring some frackin' awesome behind-the-scenes interviews and updates. This week, we take a closer look at the fate of Dr. Guy Spaltar and what really makes him twitch. I mean, tick. After carefully weighing the evidence, this tribunal finds you not guilty. At the end of season three, everything has been thrown up into complete turmoil on Galactica. With the freeing of Guy's Baltar, his lengthy trial, which ends with his exoneration. I may have had some hand in that, only in that being in, in a prison cell was really starting to get to me in the sense of Basically, I think towards the end of the show, it was pretty up to the last minute whether I was going to be found innocent or guilty. Relax, guys. You think I've brought you this far just to let it end here? There was talk as well about, you know, we want to bring back some aspects of Baltar that were, in some fashion, funnier. That is so beautiful. They came to me and they went, well, the way we're going to do this next year when you're in prison, I went, hey, hey, if you want it to be funnier and warmer, I think the next year has to be out of prison. Can you feel God's presence? You know what I think I do. Being a complete free man now, he's, he's ready to roam and he's on the prowl again in a big way. There were hints of it at the end of season three. There's a sort of gaggle of ladies who have taken a shine to him. Uh, guys, it's okay, come with me. He certainly has some changes around during this particular season himself. And I think it's fair to say, gains a new form of cult status. When am I getting out of here? When am I getting off the ship? They're really who help him survive, because he probably would have been killed just by angry, angry people thinking he got off and, or, you know, was helping the, the Cylons and so forth. None of the other ships will have you. Within that, Gaius actually starts to step up to the plate a little bit from what Number Six has been wanting him to do. Don't let this child die. To really kind of understand his spirituality and the power that he has and that he is special and that there's something that he's meant to do. Sins revealed only to those who enter the temple, only to the chosen one. He is tending to believe that having been through so many things, really the only thing keeping him alive is God. She's not the chosen one, you are. In that way, as somebody who started off his journey as being pretty hapless, now, so much further along into the jigsaw puzzle as he is, he starts to see connections in a way that, you know, there's something keeping him alive. He has some destiny to fulfill. Yeah, six. Save my life. Baltar himself is searching for something, be it redemption, be it running away from his guilt. Conspiracy requires intent. I never intended. There's some answer, and that answer has been eluding him for four seasons. God, give me the truth before I die. I'm sure he's gonna get it some, some way or the other. Oh my God, I don't know about you, but I can't wait. Again, the fourth season of Battlestar Galactica premieres here on Space, Friday, April 4th at 10 p.m. Eastern. Next up is something you don't have to wait for. Now playing in theaters is 10,000 BC, directed by Roland Emmerich. It's a story about a young hunter and his warrior friends who are forced to battle an all-powerful god to save civilization and his one true love. Ten Thousand BC is a classic hero myth story. Let me go! Where a young hero has to pretty much go into the end of the world to rescue his girl. 
through this journey, he learns to take responsibility on for more. We will join our brothers and sisters on the mountain of the God. First for like a group of people. And convince them to fight with us. And then for many, many more. Together, as one! I think the thing that holds it together and makes it um, more entertaining and more engaging is the idea that it's a mythology. It's, it's mythical and there's a legend and there's a prophecy. And so these things usually have a sort of a spiritual undertone to it. And so that's what I think, well, it's kind of the glue that holds together a movie like this. One of the fun things about the movie is it's been a long time since anyone's seen the construction of the pyramids in a, in a film. Especially the way we've got it with mammoths and slaves and the idea that this happened 12,000 years ago is pretty out there. So it's a gigantic set and a really, really fun shoot. And we think it's going to be a really fun part of the movie. What's really advanced about the technology now is that we're doing lots of stuff without blue screen. We don't have to imagine the whole environment. This way! We can film here and then they add the elements in, which is a huge advantage. Because at least you've got an environment that you're interacting with. I think there's something really beautiful about how how the human condition really doesn't change no matter what time period it takes place in. I think what makes human beings human beings is that there is love and compassion and conscience. And I think it's just, it's just a story that, that can relate no matter what time period you live in. To celebrate the release of 10,000 BC, Space and Warner Brothers would like to send one lucky viewer and a friend on an adventure of a lifetime. You pick the destination within 10,000 miles and we'll set you up with airfare, hotel, ground transportation and $500 spending money. All you have to do is log on to our website at spacecast.com for all the details. Now sit tight because coming up after the break, Nat takes us inside a very eclectic video game store in New York and another fan favorite, Super Mario in Super Smash Brothers Brawl. It's been six years since fans went nuts for Super Smash Brothers, and that anticipation is about to be unleashed once more. One, go! Welcome back, everyone. The Big Apple is known for its many vibrant and vanguard retail stores and boutiques. So while she was there, our very own Natasha Eloy checked out a place that's definitely every gamer's delight. The evolution of video games and consoles are quite amazing when you consider we started out with Magnavox Odyssey and then moved on to Atari Pong, and now today we have PS3 and the Wii. Just as amazing is the story behind Video Games New York. This is almost like a museum. I was expecting like a retail store with the latest and greatest releases. You obviously do that, but... We do this, yeah. but you know, we're kind of specialty store. I'm pretty sure we have a, I would say, the most complete retro store in the United States. This is our little museum thing, right. you know. We got from the Game & Watch and the little arcade of the 80s. Well, I remember when the little mini arcade machines came out, like, those were like hot commodities if you could find one or if your parents bought you one for Christmas. I'm sure you have like a holy grail, don't you? The Nintendo World Championship 1990. There are only 96 made. There was an auction on eBay for one of them that went for over $7,000. Holy! And here we have some of the rare game, the rare system that exists in Japan for a few months and after disappear from the market, you know. This is the FMRD. Here we have some PC effects. Uh, you know, that's basically the different Japanese version of the tuber graphics. Mm -hmm. The Wonders One, uh, we have some 64 uh, Japanese. Uh. What kind of games do you like to play? I'm more like a fighter kind of guy. Do you like the shoot 'em up games? No, I don't. 
We ha always have to add what everybody is looking for, you know. I have a kids eight, nine years old into Atari, and they're really like geeks about, you know, oh, I wanna, why are you gonna get to the Mario Brothers for an Atari? I don't have it. No, oh, no, no, no. So they write down the list, uh, they drive crazy their parents. Uh, it's really, it's really Okay, strange. Super Smash Brothers is coming out and they want old school Super Mario. That is crazy. Video Games New York are internationally known for their unique video game systems and games. There may be one game title that might be difficult to find in the weeks to come because it's one of the most highly anticipated games of 2008. It's Super Smash Brothers Brawl for the Nintendo Wii. It's been six years since fans went nuts for Super Smash Brothers, and that anticipation is about to be unleashed once more. This isn't just a typical fighting game. This is Nintendo's eclectic mixed bag of gaming all-stars, Super Smash Brothers Brawl. What it allows you to do is pit Nintendo characters against each other uh, in crazy forums with some crazy action. There are a lot of surprises waiting for new and returning players, including some characters you might not expect in a Nintendo game. Wait, what am I doing here? <laughs> I'm not very good at Snake, am I? As you progress through it, you're going to find that you're going to unlock some things that are really going to surprise some people and get a lot of people excited. So I don't want to give out too much information, but wait until you see some of the stuff that pops up there. It'll be real exciting. Along with new characters, new scenes, and new moves, there will be a more robust single-player story mode, customizable levels, and for the first time, a network multiplayer mode. I really enjoy the online play the most, I think. The fact that I can play someone on the other side of the world if I want. So to be able to have that option uh, is fantastic, and I think a lot of our audience is going to really appreciate that. The winner is... Samus. You can start appreciating it this Sunday when Super Smash Bros. Brawl is released. Attention all gamers, train and be ready for the brawl to end them all. EB Games and Nintendo of Canada Limited will be hosting a national Super Smash Brothers Brawl tournament at select EB Games locations beginning this April. To register and for complete tournament details, visit the website listed below. Sounds like a smashing good time. And if it's fun you're looking for, stay tuned because coming up after the break, we're taken out of this world at the Ontario Science Centre and we announce another space premiere. Hands and knees and heads bowed down, everybody down. I did the TV show with that cast and it was alchemy. It was lead into gold. It was something that I'd never felt before. It's worse than you know. It usually is. We're back and taking off again with our space cadet, Natasha Eloy. Nat has been waiting for over a year for one of her favorite places to be refurbished, and this week, her wait was finally over. For those of you into space, you'll be happy to know that the Ontario Science Centre has now reopened their great space hall, and I went on a tour to check out what's new. We're so excited. We uh, wanted to give visitors the opportunity to explore the universe through breathtaking exhibits. This is a slice of a Mars meteorite. And then right next to it, we have one of the Apollo moon rocks. And this is actually one of the rocks that was collected by Apollo 17 astronauts while they were walking on the surface of the moon. It's insane, the fact that we have two of the most rare specimens right here in the Ontario Science Centre Space Hall. This is one of the most famous meteorites in the world. It's actually a Canadian treasure as well. It's called the Tagish Lake Meteorite. And here we explain how freefall works, why you can be floating in space even though there's gravity. Sometimes space can be a little bit overwhelming and mystifying and so we really wanted to provide answers to the most common questions that everybody wants to know. And there to answer questions at the launch was the first female civilian astronaut, Alicia Ansari. I loved it. I saw uh, the uh, new exhibit hall just this morning and also I had a chance to go to the new innovation area and there's a lot of thought-provoking images and ideas that will stay with every kid that who visits it. 
from outer space to what's premiering on space, March 15th at 9 p.m. Eastern is Joss Whedon's Serenity. So here's us on the raggedy edge. Come a day there won't be room for naughty men like us to slip about at all. I did the TV show with that cast and it was alchemy. It was led into gold. It was something that I'd never felt before. Hands and knees and heads bowed down. Everybody down. That's why the movie happened, because I needed to have that in my life again. You want to run this ship? Yes. Well, you can't. The movie revolves around River, who has been manipulated by the Alliance. <coughs> she is a mite unpredictable. It's worse than you know. It usually is. And she brings us to Mal and his crew from the ship, Serenity. This is the captain. We may experience some slight turbulence and then explode. Empty as he is, he desperately clings to and protects what makes him whole, which is this ship and everyone in it. Would you turn? Do you want to fly this thing? You want uh, would you pull over? There's really a lot of comedy in the show. I mean, we're on a spaceship, you know, you can't take yourself too seriously. Damn it, I don't need a back spaceship driver! It has the same firefly feeling to it. No, yes. no. Yes. But it's a little darker, and it's it's just a little, little, little bit different. You're not going to see this coming. And of course, when you're a smash hit and a fan favorite like Serenity, you've got to have super cool collectibles. Fans of Serenity, you have all the other ornament ships, but do you have the enemies? Dark Horse has for a couple of years been making some ornament sized facsimiles of some of the ships from Serenity. We've done the Serenity ship itself, a limited edition version of the Serenity in disguise. We've just come out with an RS shuttle, and this is the fourth in the series, which is the Reaver ship. And look at the detail of this, fans. Well, using the three-dimensional graphics, literally every minute detail of this ship is, is there exactly as it was on the film. One of the thing it gave us was 100% accuracy into the smallest detail. Right down to the paint, or should we say the blood. <laughs> as well as the ship, David, you got some other neat items here. Tell us about this. Well, this is some prototype panels of two items that you see coming this spring, which are two Serenity collector lunch boxes one of which will be the Serenity ship, and the, we're showing this because there's nice embossing to it. And then we could not resist the OD bar as its own lunchbox, and we were able to get with the creators of that bit of Serenity, the little commercial, and are creating a second lunchbox. It'll be a fruity OD bar lunchbox. Miranda. So when you need something to put your fruity OD bars in <laughs> to take to school, we've got it for you. I have a little crush on Nathan Fillion. Stay where you are because after this short break, we'll talk to members of the SG-1 crew on their new direct-to-DVD film, Stargate SG-1, The Ark of Truth. The movie really does put a finality to uh, the arc of the Ori. You think I fear the contents? I'm, I'm saying you really should. If you've been following the show, yeah, it's a massive payoff. Welcome back, everyone. After completing 10 seasons and being credited as the longest consecutive running sci-fi TV show in the 2007 Guinness Book of World Records, the Stargate was closed on SG-1. But it's now being reopened. Available this Tuesday, March 11th, is a direct-to-DVD movie, Stargate SG-1, The Ark of Truth. Hey, kids, guess what? We are under fire. Ark of Truth is kind of the perfect finish to 10 years of Stargate. It, it wraps up the Ori storyline really succinctly, and it's this big blowout final episode, it feels like, in movie form. I do not remember sending out invitations to this party. There were a lot of, you know, loose ends that we had left at the end of season 10. There were a lot of storylines that hadn't been dealt with. 
essentially our galaxy was still under siege by, you know, all these bad guys. There, were, there had to be some resolution to that. This crusty old chest is our salvation from oppression at the hands of the Ori army. Our best and maybe only remaining chance that we have. We've dug how many holes in the ground? Help me out here, muscles. Many. The movie really does put a finality to uh, the, the arc of, of the Ori, and it's a, it's a very satisfying conclusion. Inside this arc is the secret to destroying the armies of the Ori, and I think the last thing you're gonna want to do is open it. If you haven't been following the series, it does stand alone, because we explain a lot of things like you would to a feature to people who've never seen it before. Okay. I think we're ready. But if you've been following the show, yeah, it's a massive payoff. Dial it up. It was a big challenge to try and pull off what we wanted to do story-wise as far as production was concerned. And we did a few things that we don't normally have the opportunity to do on the show. I think we kind of blew the budget on the effects. Yeah, it's massive got all the best traits of an SG-1 episode, but it's bigger and bolder and better. Fans love it because, you know, I, I think uh, as much as fans enjoyed the show throughout the years, the show was always truncated. Uh, we always had time and, and budgetary issues to contend with. Wait, 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 we can't. We, we don't know how stable this tunnel is. So we turn back then, Daniel Jackson. Bombs away. With the movie, we weren't confined by those same things that, that, that make big stories feel smaller. It's a climax of, of a two-year storyline and a television series that millions and millions of people have seen. It's funny, I was just thinking we couldn't get any more screwed. So it's a thank you for being faithful to our show and you want a rich reward for that? Boom, Stargate the Ark of Truth and that's exactly what it is. Weapons to maximum. Sir? It's a joke, Marks. Make it go. If you'd like to win your very own copy of Stargate SG-1, The Ark of Truth, and the special SG-1 box set consisting of seasons 1 through 10, just log on to spacecast.com for all the details. Well, that's it for me. I will see you next time in hyperspace. Bye.